My name is Mariam Zerbo. I became disabled after getting meningitis when I was a baby. When she became disabled, her father did no longer want her. Her mother also died, so she was left with me. Her mother died when she was very young. Her father doesn't want her, but he holds on to her birth certificate and he refuses to hand it over. <coughs> Today, there are many changes in my life. I can sweep the floor, wash the dishes. The only thing I can't do is go and fetch the water. In the organization, I have also been able to learn some activities such as embroidery and I make small things to sell. In the future, I hope I will be able to use my hands better and make a living raising chickens. One of the main activity of our organization is to make the community more aware of the need to send disabled children to school. Our members are grown adults, but disabled children still face huge difficulty accessing education. This led us to set up an advocacy group with support from other organizations. Together we are trying to promote inclusive education through radio broadcast, local debate and others at another activity. I must confess that our advocacy group is functioning very well. My name is Awakone. I have four children. I am illiterate because my parents denied me the right to go to school because of my disability. Fortunately, when I joined the organization, there have been a lot of changes, especially with the radio broadcast about disability issues. As a result, my parents apologized to me and asked me to forget about the past and just think about my future. Disabled women are faced with many problems. Being a woman in Burkina Faso is a disability. And being a disabled woman is being disabled twice. Also, parents tend to overprotect their disabled children. So many grow up and end up knowing nothing. My young father pitied me too much and he didn't want me to do anything in the house. My mother was the one who insisted that I learn some domestic responsibilities. I am now appealing to all parents of disabled children, be they boys or girls. Don't try to overprotect them. Just try to help them to work at home. It is true they cannot do everything, but what they are able to do, let them do it. You must also send your children to school for their own well-being, because disabled children cannot afford not to go to school in today's world. I joined the organization, but I didn't go to school and I am illiterate. But with support from ADD, I attended literacy classes in my local language, so I know now how to write. We all know that illiteracy is a really big problem. I have seven children, there were eight but one died. All my children go to school. The first one has just passed his baccalaureate, the second one is in grade four, and the last child has just passed his primary education certificate. Most of the members of the organization used to be illiterate, but now, with the help of ADD, they now know how to write. My name is Yara Kambu. 
I am the president of the Provincial Network of Disabled Persons Organizations and also the president of the organization of Visually Impaired. This Braille Literacy Program is a two-year project which is meant to, firstly, enable visually impaired people to read and write in Braille. Secondly, facilitate communication between the visually impaired people of this province, the rest of the country, and the world in general. Thirdly, to facilitate the social integration of visually impaired people. Literacy is important for everybody, and this is the reason why we approached the National Programme for Literacy and non-formal education to influence the inclusion of blind people's needs, because we are also part of society. This can only be achieved if we are taught to read and write. Our province network is also involved in the promotion of disabled young people's access to employment by placing them in apprenticeships. This has been possible with support from ADD. ADD has helped us in the whole process, but we have been encouraged by the fact that we want to promote disabled people access to employment and vocational training. By placing these young people into apprenticeships, we wanted to show all those who doubt disabled people's abilities that disabled people could work. Now they have seen and they believe that we also can do something. We now have several children who have finished their apprenticeships and are working for themselves throughout the province. Through this, the disabled young people can be self-reliant and better integrated within the society. Also, society that has marginalized disabled people for a long time now knows that all their beliefs regarding disabled people were just prejudices and that despite their disabilities, they are still capable of achieving. The committee was created on June 30th, 2006 to promote the rights of disabled children in the province and to influence the inclusion of disabled children's needs in development programs. The board is made up of seven members. It is estimated that there are approximately 100 disabled children in the province. We hope to have a full census of the children in the province, but due to financial constraints, this has not yet been achieved. 